Welcome to the Dice Gods, my name is Hydra and today we're pleased to bring you our review of a brand new product from our friends over at Micro Art Studio. Please note that the products in this review were supplied for free by Micro Art Studio for the purposes of this review. While we appreciate that, all of our reviews are done with one thing in mind. Would we buy it? Quite simply, would we reach into our wallet, pull out our hard-earned cash, give it to the uh, supplier, and more importantly, when we bought it and we put it together and it sat on the tabletop, would we be pleased with the result? Would we feel that it's value for money? So whilst these products were supplied for free, you can be sure that our review is impartial and honest. If you follow us on any other social media, and if you don't, you should do, you will have seen our recent glowing review of the District 5 containers from Micro Studio. The fact we're fans of their terrain isn't exactly a secret, it's all over our Infinity Academy videos and you're going to see it soon in some battle reports. So when they asked us if we wanted to review their new range of pre-painted terrain, the answer was a resounding yes. Possibly a little loud, possibly a little enthusiastic, we were keen. But when we found out that it was designed for a 28-30mm World War II setting, specifically with Warlord's bolt action in mind, we were a little concerned. You see, Micro Studio has a long, strong connection with Infinity from Corvus Belly. Producing the terrain and tokens for the game, they know Infinity. They know that sci-fi setting. But bolt action? It's a very different game. Terrain is so often the uncredited third player in a war game, having a massive impact on the way the game plays, the winner and the loser. Good terrain becomes a canvas on which the game is played, a backdrop to events. Bad terrain gives an advantage to one player over the other in a disproportionate way and defines the game. It's presence removing player agency, taking away their options and helping to define the outcome of the game in a way it shouldn't. And the difference between those two types of terrain is one thing, how well the terrain's designer understands the game they're designing for. Thankfully, Micro Studio knows this as well as we do, so their new World War II Normandy range of pre-painted 28-30mm terrain was created by a designer with extensive experience playing bolt action. Hearing that, we were a little relieved, but still, we discreetly shared some images with some of our friends over at tabletopper.nl who for those of you who don't know are very heavily involved in the bolt action community and play tournaments around the world showed them the images and to say they were enthusiastic would be an understatement the most common words we heard from those guys and some other bolt action players we showed it to were need want and now they didn't even say please it's quite shocking in fact, I have to be honest, the Dice Gods isn't known for bold action. We don't play it. But if ever there was a time that I've been tempted to play bold action, this terrain, I have to say, there's been moments, my credit card is nervous. But let's see what all the fuss is about. And start by taking a look at the construction of some of these buildings. Okay, that's more than enough chat from me. Let's have a look at the goodies that MicroArt have sent through for us to take a look at. So, let's start big and work our way down um, with, woof, really is big, the Townhouse 2. So this is quite a substantial piece of terrain, as you can see. And as you can see here, one of the great things about this set is that they are pre-painted both inside and out. So when you're playing the interiors here, these are fully painted interiors ready to roll. Um, you can also remove the different layers. You can play through the building. And one of the things that I find really fantastic as well is they've got acrylic window panels. So rather than just having the normal thing that you get with a lot of... Um, MDF terrain where you either have a gaping hole or maybe you get a little bit of colored acrylic These are very thin very fine um, Acrylic windows and they look fantastic to be honest with you. So we have townhouse 2 
We also have this little cafe, which is just a fantastic piece of terrain. Um, I'm really blown away by the amount of character these guys have as well. Each, each building looks cohesive with the others, but also distinct, and yeah, I think that's just amazing. Then we have the garage with petrol station for when you really need to fill up your uh, Sherman or patch it up because the Germans did horrible things to you. You also see as well in a lot of these they have um, openable and closable doors which you can, if you wish, glue in place but you can leave in place and then move around. Um, the roofs also come off as well which is brilliant. We have a wall with a high gate when you need some line of sight blocking terrain but also to give your buildings that little bit of character, a little bit of natural feel of being a real lived in place, which is cool. And last but not least, and this one's already open, we have the large brick shed. So as I say, I've already opened this one up because there's some things I want to show you. First of all, back of here, you have your instructions. As you can see, they're pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Um, you have this twin skinned wall so you have the interior then the exterior goes over the top of it that's so you have the two-sided painted job done um, and the doors and the uh, roofs as well are designed to be removable you see here when they're red don't glue them down so that way you can move things around make them different take them off to store them whatever you want but uh, it's a really nice touch so if you've built MDF terrain before, you'll be familiar with this. You get your sheets, which have already been laser cut. Um, these are especially fine. You see the little details and stuff cut through. Gives them a lot of character. This particular one, because this is of three sheets, put it together, including the box on the outside. I've actually already removed two of the pieces here. As you see, that's just not oversight. Um, the reason for that is I wanted to show you if there's a hard bit to this terrain, to this style of terrain, it is removing these protective layers because this is over the, the painted side of the terrain. So if you tear at this, if you, if you, if you go at it with a lot of enthusiasm and um, absolutely no chill, you have a reasonable chance of peeling off the detail that's underneath, the color that's underneath. So it's worth taking your time with this. And I remember when I did the first set of pre-painted terrain that I got from MicroArt, I was a little bit like, mm. a bit, mm. I just want to get done, I want to get it built, it's all exciting. You know, it's taking more time, this is taking more time than it would do for a normal piece, for an unpainted one. I had to have the chat with myself that when this is peeled and we have the detail underneath, and you glue it together, it's done. This is ready for the tabletop. I mean, obviously you need to let it dry for a little bit, but it's ready to roll. Normally when you glue MDF terrain together, it's priming time and then when it's priming time is done, then it's painting time and when painting time is done, then it's weathering time and potentially decal time and potentially detailing time and this taking them off the, off the frame and, and gluing together is the start of that journey. With this pre-painted stuff from MicroArt, it's one step away from the end. So it's worth investing some of the time that you're saving in just being quite delicate with these pieces as you take them apart or as you take the protective layer off so let me just see I'd like to point out that I will not be able to do this on camera because of course I won't so it is a matter of being very 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 careful with this and I like I do the edges first because that's where I've seen it's most likely to catch and come apart so let's see if we can get this right in camera here I'm going to try and do this really, really slowly. So you see there's a little bit of white coming through there where it's come off. If you do this very quickly, that will bring more friends with it. So you've got to really take your time. I'm being a little bit exaggerated here because I am well aware, because I'm doing this on camera, the chances of it just absolutely going sideways are huge, but so far so good. There we go. That's another little bit. And the great thing is, because these are the tabs that are peeling a little bit, they won't actually show on the miniature when they're done. Or in the miniature, on the piece of terrain when they're done. But, there you go. So that took a little bit longer than, you know, 
just whapping out a piece of uh, MDF, but we've only got a few small misses here. If that happens anywhere that's visible, you can touch that in with, well, paint, or leave it, or colour with a decal if that's something that you have. But that, really see the quality and the crispness of the detail there. See the individual bricks, the weathering that's already done. When this is glued together, he's ready to go. Let's see if we can do this again with the second one, just to get an idea. I'm so tempted to do this quickly, just to so show you how wrong it can go, but I'm not going to. I'm going to be a grown-up. Not be able to grab hold of the piece. So, do a little bit quicker now. I don't know if you saw it, just caught quickly there and then released. You will find that some of those, this is why it's important to do it sort of relatively slowly, you'll see that some will catch and they'll start to peel. The trick then is to stop, go from the other side and go back to the piece that's peeling. So if it's starting to come up, then just come from the other side and remove the tape from the other side of it and you'll find that will solve the issue. So that one's actually even better. Getting my eye in, guys. So yeah, that gives you an idea of the quality, up close and personal. Um, and that is, I can't stress that enough, take your time peeling these. Uh, the more haste, the more rushed you are with this, the, the worse the result's gonna be. Um, and that's such a shame when the Micro Arts guys have done such a fantastic job of, of designing this beautiful terrain. And you've paid for it, of course. That's going to suck. So now I'm going to move to a time lapse and we are going to film me putting some of this stuff together. I will see you after that. Okay, my normal time lapse gear has decided not to play today, so I'll be speeding this video up for you guys in a bit. But first, a couple of points to note. You're gonna need ordinary wood glue to stick this together. So have that on hand. Um, I have prepared and taken all of the, um, the protective covering off of this before I started, just to speed things up a little bit from you guys' perspective. Um, yeah, there's a couple of little messes, a couple of little nicks that might need tidying up later, but to be honest with you, probably not. This has come off really smooth and really easy. Um, you will need a knife to tidy up certain points like inside of this little hinge piece here You can see a little nub of wood there that will technically need to come off uh, Before this will go together well, so uh, You can tie that up with a knife uh, or you can tie it up with a Piece of sandpaper or something similar like that. Just be careful so you don't actually damage the, the piece of wood um, I might actually keep my brave pants on and look at this Don't I think I might be able to get away with it. So we're gonna try so, with that said, I'm going to get to work, got my instructions, got my glue, got all my pieces around me, it's time to rock and roll. Wish me luck, I'll see you on the other side. A quick note, when you're painting this, check where the paint is set up to be aged and where it's set up to be new. So with this kind of thing, 
the roof, you can get a bit that's more weathered towards the end where the water's going to roll down and collect. So just make sure you check that before you glue things on around the wrong way like I just did. Will it make a massive difference? No, but that's just the kind of person I am. There you have it, all built and ready to go. That took less than 10 minutes in total to put together. And yeah, I mean, fantastic result. Can't argue with that at all. These doors can still be moved and opened. As you just saw, the roof can come off. Got the separate box that can go on the side. So, that is our large brick shed, probably in total, including peeling 15 minutes of my life. And that's now ready to make my table look phenomenal. Now we're going to do the rest. So thankfully my time-lapse gear came back to life, so you lovely people get a time-lapse of me building one of the larger buildings. What you'll see with this is it's a lot more intricate and detailed, especially with putting the windows in. So this all told took probably about 90 minutes, including the removing very carefully of all the covering on all the wood, as well as putting the windows in, etc, etc, etc. So it's a bit of a commitment of time, but by comparison to some of the larger MDF kits I've put together for terrain, it's comparable in time. And as I've said repeatedly in this review, as soon as it's glued together and it's dried, it's done and ready to play. So definitely worth it and as you'll see the results are phenomenal. So just to give a little bit more in-depth on these buildings, as you can see, they're absolutely stunning. They go together incredibly well. Um, as you'd expect from MicroArt, it's great work. These aren't actually glued on, so you can move them around, take them off as you see fit. These guys are from Warlord. Uh, this is obviously a bow action US half track. Um, this guy, if memory serves, is a Marine from their Vietnam range, but for scale, as you can see, these buildings are absolutely perfectly in scale for bolt action um, or an equivalent system. 28 or 30 millimetre is perfect. One of the great things I love about these is how playable the interiors are. And as we've mentioned before, the interiors being painted as well or being coloured as well. It's just fantastic. For systems that use interiors very heavily, like as I understand it, bolt action does, the immersion and quality that this gives straight away is amazing. Um, and that goes, so if we can do this one handed with the buildings too. So there's your attic space. This is going to be a bit harder, probably. Yep, yeah, there you go. That comes off. This comes off as well, but it'll, it's a two handed job, I think. So we can come, oh, no, there we go. Sort of. There we go. So you can play all the levels of these buildings. Um, inside the shed too and inside this guy as well so as you'll have noticed there's a couple of bits missing I'm trying to get this video done on time for you guys I've been stuck on some of the bits around the windows and things and a couple of the tops of these walls but 
yeah these sets are great um what issues do i have with them there's a couple of bits that could be a little better in my head um, some of the instructions aren't 100 percent clear from my perspective so on this building here we have these roof sections here they are thin wood which is fine but there's one basically the same size as this that's for here so this piece at the front at the bottom here this glues on separately on the instructions they both look the same size they both look the same color so initially this piece went on the outside i was like okay well it's an offset for the signage so around the back maybe that's what it's for and it was only when i came to the roof that i was like oh this is the and they are actually slightly different size even though they don't look it on the instructions um, also this door here there's a, a large door just turn this around there's a large door and a small door you're supposed to stick the large door facing into the uh, room and then the small door from the outside but in my rush you know, on the stick, I didn't pick that up so I glued the large one in worked all the way to the top and then realized oh I've got this door oh there's your problem and you have little bits like this where that bit isn't quite colored but um, aside from that these are fantastic you can even take these base bits off and end up with destroyed buildings this guy as well let's see if we can do this again one-handed i'm just going to take every single piece of this building apart because that's how it goes in these situations and there we go so if you want a ruined village if you're of that frame of mind or have destructible buildings then that'll work um, this garage also large enough to house vehicles as well if you want to hide them inside and be sneaky overall i'm really impressed with this i think it's beautiful i think it looks fantastic obviously it's now all in bits but you got the idea a minute ago it's nicely detailed the interior and the exterior being painted is fab the price point from my perspective is great um, a full table of this for a six by four is probably going to be around 150 200 euros i guess and then you're going to have your uh, roads and stuff on top of that but the great thing is you will spend the time as i've mentioned gluing this together and that is done this is you know i've done nothing more to this um you can spend time like painting in these so that they match giving them a bit of color so not just the color of the wall if you wanted to um that's things you could do you could put some battle damage in whatever you wanted but these are fantastic great quality um and beautiful to play on straight away so yeah i'm impressed and for the few small little details in the instructions which if i'm honest if i'd have taken more time i probably would have avoided yeah i can't fold them they're really fantastic bits of kit at the start of this review we mentioned that there are two types of terrain good terrain which becomes a canvas or bad which impacts the game in a negative way it's just possible with this new world war ii range that micro studio have found a third type terrain which enhances the gameplay while creating a rich immersive narrative for the players to engage with they hit a sweet spot of wow factor and great gameplay bravo micro studio consider us impressed now when do we get something like this for, I don't know, 28mm sci-fi? Asking for a friend, of course. We definitely don't need more tables, honest. Call us. Definitely call us. As ever, thanks for joining us and please consider giving the video a like and subscribe. And we will see you again very soon.